Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, we'll uh, begin with Abhishek. Um, then uh, after Abhishek, we'll have uh, Andrew Munro present and then uh, Vimal and Diksha. Okay, so over to uh, Abhishek Sagar. Okay, uh, Master, am I audible? Yes, yes, we can hear you clearly, yes. Okay, apologize for being late and uh, since I'm traveling, I'm not able to present in the first lecture. No problem. Uh, Abhishek, would you like, sorry to interrupt, you like to put on your screen with you? Actually, I, actually, I can't pass by. I mean, like, I'm in somebody else's home and it's like okay, quite fine. messy setup. No yeah. worries. Okay, so, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just uh, share. Let me just share my screen so you guys can also follow up what I'm going to share with that. So just give me a moment so I can. Uh, okay. Hope you all can see the screen. It's yes, we it. can see your, the screen and we can hear you as well. Okay. Uh, okay, first of all, let me just meet you guys. Hope all of you are well. And uh, I'm Abhishek Sagar right now at somebody's at home or somebody other's home. Like uh, I'm not able to show my face right now so I'm on the camera, but you can see, see the screen and you can follow up with me like what I'm going to present. Okay, so today we are going to look about two missionaries. Like first one is Edward Irving and the second person is Titus Cohn. Let me begin with the uh, Edward Irving. So... He born in uh, 1792 and he died up uh, in 1834. So if you want to look about like uh, what he actually did. So he served in Scotland. He did his uh, ministry work in Scotland. And uh, apart from that, just I'm going to read through it and you guys just follow me what I'm reading. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. Oh. So Edward Irving, he born in 1792 and he died up in 1834, a significant figure in early 19th century Christian revival movements. He started his ministry, began as a Presbyterian minister, uh, uh, began as a Presbyterian minister in the Church of Scotland, leading a small congregation in London. His powerful preaching attracted around 1,000 attendees within months. He focused, preached on the second coming of uh, Christ, uh, sorry, and emphasizes the need of for spiritual renewal, charismatic experience and controversies, challenge to traditions. In 1827, after studying a book of Acts, Irving argued that the spiritual gifts like tongues, prophecies, healing should be an outgoing part of Christian life. Charismatic manifestations, his congregation began experiencing tongues and prophecies which Irving encouraged, especially to the lay people, uh, non-clergy members. Conflict with the church authorities, his unorthodox approach led to tension with the Church of Scotland as spiritual gifts were usually restricted to clergy. And uh, heresy education, his emphasizes on uh, Christ's humanity, that Christ lived a sinless life through the power of the Spirit led to accusation of heresy, resulting in his exploration from the London Presbytery and Scottish Church in 1833. Formation of the Catholic Apostle Church. New movement. After his exploration, uh, Irving founded the Catholic Apostle Church, which aimed to replic replicate the early, uh, sorry, uh, this is again. Uh, early church charismatic experience as described in X. Disorder and challenges. The lack of structural leadership in the movement led to confusion. Genuine spiritual experience were mixed with caution, emotional driven actions, causing internal strife. Struggle and final years. Health this, sorry, health this line and leadership struggles. Irving struggled to maintain control over his movement amidst increased criticism. Sorry, criticism is sorry, and this is not audible. My throat is not uh, properly <laughs> like I'm pretty nervous right now. Increasing criticism and disorder, death, 
1834, he died at the age of 42, likely from uh, the tuberculosis with his movement in this line. Legacy and impact, charismatic and Pentecostal movement, Irving teaching on the continuation of the spiritual gift led to the foundation for modern Pentecostal and charismatic movements. Lay participation ministry, he championed the idea that ordained church members could exercise spiritual gifts with influence the more participatory worship seen into today's charismatic churches. Uh, Christology and astrology, his controversies view on the humanity of Christ and focus on the second coming influenced, influenced later astrology movements. Despite the controversies and ultimate failure, <coughs> sorry. Despite the controversies and ultimate failure of his movements, Irving's openness to charismatic gifts and his vision for a spirit-filled church made him a pioneer of a modern charismatic Christianity. Learning from Edward's Irving revival, openness to spiritual gifts, lay participation in ministry, need for discernment and leadership. Application from Edward's Irving revival, just opposite of it, encouraging spiritual gifts, empowerment, empowering lay people, providing strong leadership and uh, let me just go to the next person uh he's a uh, he's titan cone as you can see in the photo okay uh just give me a moment okay so as we can see he born in 1801 sorry 1801 you can see and he died up in 1881 very similar numbers, 1801 and 1881. <laughs> so, conversion, his conversion and call. So, Titus Cone was converted during the Second Great Awakening in the US, which inspired his passion for his missionary work. Missions to Hawaii, 1835, Cone and his wife, Feldelia, arrived in Hilo, Hawaii, under the American Board Com Commissioner Commissioners for Foreign Mission to evangelize the native population, culture and political context. The Hawaiian monarch had recently embraced Christianity, creating a fertile environment for the gospel. The great revival of 1837-1838. Preaching and revival, phone simple direct preaching resonated deeply with the Hawaiians, sparking a revival. Mass conversion, meetings grew rapidly with up to 15,000 attendees and thousands of people converting to Christianity. Camp meetings, revival meetings listed to uh, years with thousand campaign out to hear Cone preach. Powerful manifestations of repentance and the Holy Spirit were common. Baptism, Cone baptized hundreds of people in a single day during the revival. Transformation, entire communication, abandoned old pagan practices, embracing Christianity and discipleship. Growth and legacy, establishment, establishing churches, uh, committed to local leadership, literacy and education. Final years of that passionate, uh, sorry, passionate ministry, uh, passionate ministry, Cohn continued his work for over 40 years, even as his health failed. He never lost his zeal for evangelism. In 1881, uh, Titus Cohn he passed away. Okay, and what he had done did he had converted 70 percent of the population of Hilo. Uh, Spiritual legacy: the revival Cohn led is considered one of the greatest in Christian history. His work led to the establishment of thriving Hawaiian churches with his influence continuing to shape Hawaiian Christian heritage for generations. Learning from Titus Cone's revival, mass evangelism, uh, indigenous leadership, or holistic impact. Applications from Titus Cone, fostering evangelism, raising local leaders, pursuing holistic ministry. So this is the thing what I have shared, okay? If somebody have any question, you can just feel free to ask me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Abhishek. That was a good study.
uh, but you could have just gone a little more slower. So can you scroll up to um, to Edward I I uh, Ivering, please? Yeah, right up the page. You can go up right okay, up. Okay. I think I'm facing a network challenge over here, so I think the presentation might might no, be. No, it is slower. very good. Now there was no uh, yeah. uh, connectivity issues. Yeah. So you can you can come down a little bit, please. Uh, so here we see that yeah, you can stop, stop, stop. So a little yeah. bit uh, up. So I just want to look at your content. Yes. So here we see that he played a significant role in the charismatic and Pentecostal uh, and Protestant movement, right? Because uh, he was somebody who was saying that the common man could flow in the gifts of the uh, spirit. Okay. So we see that um, uh, he was for that. Uh, he was like more passionate about, uh, you know, uh, spiritual renewal in the church, uh, talking about second coming of uh, Jesus Christ, uh, talking about how Jesus, even though he was, uh, uh, you know, human, he was flowing in the gifts and so how the common people could uh, flow in the gifts of the uh, spirit. Okay. Uh, can you just move up a little more? So we see that he was, uh, uh, he was ministering church in Scotland and his congregation moved to uh, grew to more than 1000 attendees uh, because i think there was a, a move of the spirit the work of the spirit yes you can move up uh, scroll up yes go up more yes so there was uh, because of the char uh, charismatic experiences and controversies that were there uh, you know uh, about um, the gifts of the spirit that we too can be like the early church uh, he was um, uh, you know, he was removed from the church. He was not given, uh, you know, the position to preach and to teach and to um, minister. Um, but then he started his own church and that grew rapidly. Can you move up again, please? Uh, just to your learnings. Uh, he, for, he formed the uh, Catholic uh, Apostolic Church, uh, Catholic Apostolic Church, yes, uh, where which uh, believed in, you know, uh, following the pattern of the early church. Yeah, you can stop here. So his legacy uh, is the charismatic and Pentecostal uh, movement that he brought about, okay, uh, emphasizing about the gifts of the spirit that can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, that that people, the, the lay people can move in the gifts of the spirit. Um, also, empower, he empowered the church members to exercise the spiritual gifts um, and that challenged the the hierarchy of the church. The church said only the, uh, uh, you know, the clergy people could flow in the gifts, but he was saying, no, it's even the uh, lay people could do it. And also there was a lot of controversy regarding his teaching on the humanity of Jesus Christ and the return of uh, Jesus Christ, which, you know, in, it influenced, but of course it was controversial, but it influenced later discussions and eschatological uh, movements. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to um, uh, uh, how uh, you know um, Titus, uh, Titus did a great work in Hawaii. It's a, it's an it's an island in, in America, you know, um, and um, we see that you know when he was ministering, there was actually a big revival. Okay, so if you look at uh, uh, Titus's um, ministry in Hawaii. It was a, a, a revival. Why do we say this was a revival? Because when he uh, preached, you know, um, it was like the word came like fire and hammer. Okay, it just convicted people. It just broke the hard heartedness of people and, you know, uh, just brought crowds of people. And uh, by his uh, ministry and the revival movement that God birthed through his life, almost 70% um, of Hawaii were. Uh, you know, uh, ministered uh, to, or you know, uh, grew in the uh, in the Lord. They they were part of the church, and so there was a great move of God. There was a great revival that was birthed in Hawaii through uh, Titus. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, um, um, uh, Abhishek. Any questions for Abhishek? No. Can we give him a clap? Uh, thank you. We'll move on to Andrew Munro. Andrew? Thank you. Good morning. Sorry, good morning. Good to, to see you see finally. You. Yes. <laughs> thank you for giving this opportunity. 
Um, ma'am, can I off my camera because I'm facing a lot of rain here in my yes, city. Yes, no worries. Yeah. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so yeah, class will begin with uh, the presentation. It's on uh, page number 46. It's about George Muller. Uh, so George Muller was a young German Christian and was called by the Lord to help the poor children of Bristol in England. Muller and his wife started to care for about 30 girls in their own rented house. He established the Ashley Down Orphanage in Bristol, England, caring for around 10,000 orphans, providing them with care and education. He also established 117 schools, providing Christian education to over 120,000 children, many who were orphans. Uh, the best thing is that Muller never asked for funds or engaged in any funds raising. So he always depended on the Lord for uh, each and every needs of his life. So the best uh, documented instance in his life is like uh, when he was uh, seated with all his children on the breakfast table and gave thanks to the Lord. And uh, even though there was nothing to eat that day, as they finished praying, uh, the baker knocked on the door with a sufficient fred, fresh bread to feed that uh, feed everyone. God had moved upon the uh, baker that night to bake more bread than usually and to take it to the orphanage. And George said, thank you, Lord, for that. And uh, he took the loaves and bread inside for the children. Just then the milkman came knocking. His start had broken down. His start had broken down right in front of the orphanage. He did not want to leave the tart there. So he decided to give the milk to George for the children. God had provided breakfast. So uh, the, the takeaway from this is like uh, not only prayer is important in our life, but prayer with faith is very, very important. So we learn it from George Muller's life. And uh, uh, as the word of God says that trusted is he who depends on the man. So instead of depending on any man or any support in our life, uh, instead of depending on that, if we trust on the Lord, our God is a Jehovah Jireh who provides our needs. So God provides our needs, he never provides our needs. So let's move further. Uh, yeah, it's about William Chalmers Burns. He was a revivalist. In, Stot in Scottish, and uh, he came to the Lord uh, in 1831, and he decided to the serve the Lord in 1839, as he was unexpected pre in an unexpected pre unexpected preaching engagement at his home church in Plissith. An unusual season season of revival broke out, uh, with almost everyone in the town turning to the Lord. Soon, Burn was being used as a revivalist around uh, Scotland. So his heart was to take the gospel to the unreached. So uh, Bourne set uh, to sail to Chinese empire via Hong Kong and began his missionary work in British Hong Kong. He later traveled to another location, including Shatao, Zaimin, and Pigeon in 1855. So Bur Burns met uh, Hudson Taylor and working together, they advanced into Chinese interior. Hudson Taylor regarded Burns as one of his spiritual mentors and wrote about the depth of Burns. So what uh, we learn from here is like uh, uh, from William uh, Charles Marr. So if we are, uh, uh, we, if we, many of you have churches in towns and cities in midst of the areas, we cannot go and reach them directly with the word, or with the gospel. But if we pray for the revival, the way we see here, that the revival came, brought out in the entire town, and the people came to the Lord. Is the same way it can happen in today's generation if you pray for the our city, for our town. And secondly, like if we are working for the Lord and if we are in 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 with God and if we are working rightly with God, God brings right people in our lives to help us to build our ministry. Like uh, Hudson Taylor, who came here. Uh, uh, Teacher, I couldn't do David David Livingston more about him because I was in traveling, so I'm sorry for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, uh, Andrew. Okay, can we clap for uh, Andrew? Over to Vimal. Come on, Vimal. Vimal is our in-person student.
Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Vimal, and I'm from Uttarakhand. And today I'm going to present about uh, Dr. Ida Sobie Skirder, and she is the medical missionary. And uh, Dr. Ida. So, Dr. Ida, uh, her full her full name is Dr. Ideas Ida. Her full name is Dr. Ida Sophia Skader, and she was born in Tamil Nadu, Ranipet, India. And in 1870, to, uh, in 1870, she is born to a family of missionary uh, missionaries. And when she is growing up in Tamil Nadu at that time, she had seen famine, diseases, and poverty all over. And because of it, she did not like India, and. Uh, she initially had no desire to follow in her family's footsteps and serve as a missionary in India. She rejected all thoughts of missionary life. and uh, But she got a life-changing experience. Uh, but God had other plans. However, uh, her life-changing experience. Uh, so she was thinking to uh, uh, live a life of comfort but God had other plans. However, after a life-changing experience where she witnessed the death, the death of three women, death of three women, in that moment she gave up all her desires and comfortable life. She decided to become a doctor to help the woman, woman of India. Later, she uh, she wrote that I think that was the first time I saw God face to face and all the time it seemed that he was calling me into this life, this work. So what happened when she was, uh, she don't want to be in India. So that time she got a, uh, she, she, her, uh, she was in US and she was studying there. And uh, because she was studying there, suddenly her mom got sick and she had to come to India and she came to India and uh, when she came to India, she, her, her mom is not well. So that's why she is alone at home that day. And uh, that night what happened, some people came from uh, that village and they are telling our, uh, our, our uh, woman is, woman is uh, uh, giving birth and they need doctor. But uh, there is uh, there is uh, no doctor that time, and uh, and uh, her mom is also sick, and uh, her father is there, and she told my father can come and they can help. But the people of that village they don't like to uh, treat by uh, doc uh, treat by the male doctor for female uh, patient, so they didn't allow that, and uh, even they didn't allow uh, their uh, their women died, and. Uh, it's very sad. So uh, she faced three cases like this in that night. And it, at that moment, she, she thought like uh, how the they are blind in spiritually and uh, they don't know the truth. So that time she took a decision and to, she decided to become a doctor to help the women of India. And uh, I want to share about his, uh, her missionary work. After completing medical training, she returned to India and uh, began her missionary work, opening a small clinic for a woman at Villore. And later by 1906, an enlarged hospital was treating 40,000 patients annually. And uh, uh, I want to uh, tell about training and education. Ida also began training local uh, women as a nurses and established roadside clinics in rural villages and her work led to the establishment of the Christian Medical College in Vellore, which is still one of the top medical colleges in India today. So her life is a very good example for us, like God has made us to bless others. So she sacrifices all the desires of her, what he wants to be in her future. She uh, sacrificed all that and she gave her life to serve people of India. And she became a medical missionary in India. And I want to tell about uh, next topic is uh, second, uh, the 
1944 runner of the healing revival so there were many people from the end of the 19th century and on it to the early part of the 20th century who began to minister healing and deliverance powerfully they were two pioneers in the healing many of them had powerfully evangelist and healing ministers so there are many healing evangelists that forerunner of the healing revival john alexander dovey marian wordsworth etter smith wigglesworth john g lake so i want to uh, i would like to share about john alexander dovey so he john alexander dovey uh, bo born in 18 uh, born in may 25 1847 in edinburgh and uh, he died march 9 at 1907 so he is a founder of christian catholic church and city of zion he was a us evangelist and faith healer who founded the christian catholic church and the city of zion so in 1901 he established the city of zion on the shore of lake mckeon mckeon and michigan about 40 miles north of chicago with about 5000 of his followers in the same year he proclaimed himself as elijah the restorer but people said you are not a man of god and uh, one of women stood up and she told you are nothing like elijah and he was saying i came with the anointing of elijah so he stood behind the pulpit uh, john uh, uh, john alexander dovey stood behind the pulpit and he raised his hands and said god proved to this woman that i came with the anointing of elijah she spoke again the uh, the woman she spoke again and said if you uh, elijah why is america in drought why can't you call rain to come for years uh, why can't you call rain to come because for years since four years there is no rain in that place so john alexander dovey he dropped his knees and from the pulpit and he said i call heaven to drop rain and he said to usher go and check and the ushers were was too late when he go to open door rain came to torrents and they stayed three four they stayed there for two nights even there are four years since four year there was no rain but when john alexander dovey prayed and he told to god god i need rain in this place so at that moment god bring rain at that place after four years and uh, they were they were experiencing that rain and uh, it's uh, i i got this information they stayed 3 4 3 three or two nights they stayed there for two nights because of that rain so our god is a miraculous god and he can use us and uh, at the last i want to tell like we are like a flowers like uh, flowers are not for themselves they they are for to give fragrance to others so we are the flowers of uh, god's kingdom and we are here to give fragrance to others we are here to bless to others like ada scudder and uh, like john alexander dovey are uh, showing the kingdom of god thank you so much thank you uh, very much um, uh, vimal good job can we give him a good job good research work thank you so much uh, for those nice uh, uh, stories which uh, really you know spoke about their lives uh, over to uh, deeksha right do we have anyone else after that arista moses are you here arista moses is there no okay come uh, diksha come abhishek i'll give you some more time you can you have such good content why don't you do it again and do it slowly and explain well you don't have to be nervous uh, you have so much of good content yeah please 
you want to do it, I can give you another chance to just go through the content. Go through slowly. Your there is no uh, problem with your connectivity. It's it was good. We could hear you very well. You were very clear, but you were just very nervous and you rushed through the content. I think you can speak a little more slowly and get us through like uh, what Vimal did. Okay, come on, Diksha. Good morning, everyone. I am Diksha, and I'm going to share about two missionaries, Maria Budworth Itter and the Charles Fox Perham, the Bethel Bible College in Topeka, Kansas. So, about Maria Budworth Itter, she was born in 1844 in America, and she was an American healing evangelist. And she was used powerfully in the healing ministry with signs and wonders. And while she received baptism in the Holy Spirit, after, his exp after this experience, she began to preach to the many people. And when, when she started preaching, her companions attracted reporters from across the country. And she had a great tent in, the, in that yeah, she had a great tent in that about 8,000 people were able to sit in her meetings. She got many offers by the many denominations like Methodism, Methodism and Bible Christians. But her dream was to evangelize in the Western state. She didn't want to stay at one place, but she likes to preach and she likes to evangelize people from the different, different place. And I like the point when in her evangelized journey, she lacked her confidence to being an evangelist and many denominations also didn't, did not allow her, not her, not her, but actually many denominations were not allow female pastor to preach and to being a pastor as a role model. But when she saw all these things, she shied away from these group and she felt like they are contradicted her calling from God. And she was, when she lacked her confidence, she was inspired by the biblical story like Deborah, Hulda and Philip's daughter and she encouraged she in, she was encouraged from these story like if she, in bible time they could do then she also can do and uh, Maria would Maria Budworth believed if continuity is there in uh, serving God and being connection with God then signs and wonders would follow the Christian church and she began to pray for the six in 1885 believing that those with sufficient faith would be healed. And the, we can apply in today's time, and she desired for the evangelized to people. She had this passion for the sick people. She believed if we have faith, then healed people will be sick. We also can apply in our life. We should have that passion. We should have that desire. Okay, if person is sick, we should give our best to pray for them and to like bring them into God. Yeah, that's what we can see about from Maria Budworth life and Charles Fox Perham and Bethel Bible College in Topeka, Kansas, 1900. Charles Fox Perham had a desire in his young age only. The, he wants to see the ch move, church powerfully in word and work. And he traveled various well-known ministry during his traveling he saw some wonderful men of God as A.B. Simpson, Frank Sanford, and A.J. Jordan, who was doing work of God in a mighty way and greatly. In October 1900, he opened a Bible school in Topeka, Kansas, with 14, 40 students. And he, and he encouraged his student to study the subject of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And... He, when he encouraged then her, his students were ready to study on the subject of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And just three days before the New Year's evening 1900. And they started to research about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then 
among the among his student one of girl was there then the in the watch night service evening 1900 1901 sorry later that evening the holy spirit manis, manifested himself with uh, unusual intensity then the the girl was name was agnes osman she was uh, his student and she felt the power of the holy spirit and she felt the baptism in the holy spirit and she was feeling like power of god is coming upon her and later when she, when they all saw this uh, work of the holy spirit they sat in upper room they waited they and they prayed for the holy spirit to pour out and it come it came as answers and they all were filled the ho- with the holy spirit and they sp- started speaking in tongues they all were seeing the power and the work of the holy spirit in a mighty way and due to some reasons of later some time the bible college came to an end but in 19 1905 perham perham opened a new bible school in houston and he continued with same earnestly desire for spirit as he had in bethel bible college topica conference thank you from this bible uh, this story sorry this missionary the charles fox yeah charles fox perham we can learn means he has the desire to see the work of the holy spirit to see the power, like pour out of the holy spirit so he desired and he encouraged his student also in today's context like we don't we don't see that much uh, reverence for like god is a okay holy spirit and all his works but we can keep the same passion how the charles fox perham had had and we can desire the same okay, because holy spirit is the same and if we will desire then he will do the same work maria yeah maria would both um, by her life we can apply in today's life she also desired to please the people means she got many offers i like means when she got many offers but she didn't agreed because she don't she didn't want to stay at one place she wants to go across the like western state and she wants to preach to the people and so we can apply in today's life it's not about staying in one place god will do his work even if we are going in different different place we are saving people so uh thank you um, diksha can we clap for diksha please yeah abhishek do you want to present again and share with us slowly uh i think not today pastor like i am not going to be in a good setting okay if it is possible then next week okay anyone else who is uh, you know uh, rostered or scheduled to share next week wants to do it today we have time anyone anyone wants to present okay uh, if not we'll um, uh, we'll end class next week uh, we'll have um, angeline and um, divya kofi komal john blessy uh, miriam sugat rupas moses prem and shaker present okay next week yeah anyone has any questions uh, praise the lord ma'am yes deepu is it okay if i give next week yeah 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 you can do it next week no worries yeah thank you thank you ma'am yeah, yeah. Okay small comment yeah you can please pass the mic to him mm. Yes Most of the preachers and whatever uh, we have discussed some of them are available on the net and internet uh, YouTube and uh, stuff but it's just a coincidence that yesterday i happened to just uh, listen the audio and the video of uh, 
Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon. Uh, one of the thing is that one he is called a uh, Prince of Preachers, mm. but it is so profound that you know on his website, which is called Prince of Preachers dot com, they still keep. Uh, he's apparently preached over three thousand sermons, and uh, those sermons are so impactful to such an extent that they, the mission, the people who are running that uh, thing, you know, they even ask for you know. uh if anybody would like to fund and think just to reach a little broader audience because um, every sermon before it starts it's very specific this sermon was preached on the sabbath day of 2nd december 1850 1860 and it is still so relevant so it was something uh, i could not uh, just take my eyes off yesterday okay. i just happened to hear that so he uh, looked at prince of preachers uh, charles spurgeon yes exactly. youtube Yes, so Charles Spurgeon was a good uh, preacher, but it, he preached from the Word of God, and the Word of God never, uh, you know, uh, uh, dries out, goes out. It's relevant for any time, any season, any period of time. So um, that's what God's Word is and ministers to us even today. Yes. I heard a comment from Ravi Zakaria. It's like, you no, know, God buries the workmen, but not the work. of his uh, thing uh, so god buries the buries buries the, the, the work. workmen but not his uh, work yes these people uh, uh, are long dead and gone uh, right you know amy michael donawood fellowship um, uh, is still there um, uh, uh, then we have uh, salvation army which was started by um, william uh, booth right uh, still present today uh going very strong and also we see uh, dl moody's um uh you know bible school that he started is still functional today so even though people die and go away but god's work is a lasting impact right and that is a characteristic of that's a characteristic of what okay that that's the work of the holy spirit yes but that's a characteristic of What is the characteristic that we're talking about? Revival. revival yes. When God births a revival, yes, it it never dies. It has a lasting impact for generations. So you can see that, right? Uh, we see Amy Carmichael in the year eighteen sixty-seven to nineteen fifty-one. Okay, how many century? Uh, I mean, uh, decades have uh, passed by. You know. but still the lasting work that is uh, there the donawur uh, fellowship even william booth salvation um, army and also um, uh, ida scudder right ida scudder such a, a powerful uh, 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 testimony and the way god used this young lady you know uh, she didn't want to do anything with india she wanted to go back to america she did not like india but she saw the situation here that you know uh the women who were giving birth were dying because they were not willing to take on the um uh, to have a uh, male uh, uh doctors and then she felt the need uh to become a doctor and to minister among the people here and she established a uh, velor uh medical school uh, the college and it's still so uh, famous uh, in india and world over so even though these people have gone you know there's such a lasting impact of what god has started in and through their um, lives right so that is what we can see is the characteristic of revivals visitation and god birthing a move which has a lasting um, impact okay okay thank you everyone for joining class uh, next week um, i'd just like to remind all of you who are doing it just be a little more slow uh, you don't have to just read the content from the book you can you know analyze it make it simpler for you so that you can uh, be able to think understand so that you can teach it in a very a uh, simple way so i'm not looking for uh, big words i'm not looking for big terminologies i'm just looking at how well you understood uh, what you are prepared and how you can communicate that and teach that well to each one of us okay so we'll yes abhishek you have your hand up just a small suggestion pastor yes. those who have prepared like docs or word in docs or word their notes so can't we just uh, put them in the stream page so others can follow up or oh, the contents you mean yeah the content if we have prepared so we can put in the stream page so they can others can follow up 
yeah uh we can do that but some of the students have just written it in the notebook because they don't have access to laptops or uh, uh, to computers so i don't want to trouble anyone and give them as is this just to present they are so stressed and if i give them all this the additional stress and i don't want to do that so i thought we'll just keep it but those of you who like to it's a good suggestion yes those of you who like to uh you know uh, type it and present it you can post it on the stream page and it can be accessible to you know, all of us yeah that's a good suggestion okay thank you everyone and i'll see you uh, next week god bless bye